Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post interview. I am here joined by Mr. Uriel Pallet, the co-founder of Orb. Welcome, sir. Hi. Thank you. So let's start with an introduction. Now, with your background and how did Orbs came to be, the birth of Orbs? Okay. Um, so my background is engineering. I studied uh, computer engineering in the Technion University of Israel, which is like the MIT of Israel. Mm -hmm. And then I co-founded my first company in the space of image recognition and uh, AI, artificial intelligence. Uh, I worked in, uh, in China for several years. We got investment from Alibaba. Mm -hmm. And in 2017, we were acquired by Alibaba. We were the first Israeli company to sell to Alibaba, mm -hmm. became the R&D center of Alibaba in Israel. Mm -hmm. And after a while, I decided uh, to leave, and I was thinking, what is the next thing I want to do? Mm -hmm. And then my younger brother, he, Daniel, he's been investing in blockchain since 2013. Mm -hmm. He invested in the beginning of you know, MasterCoin and Ethereum and all the initial like, uh, ICOs. Mm -hmm. And so I joined him, and we started uh, doing investment in the space like back in uh, 2017. Mm -hmm. And while we were doing investments, we also thought that a lot of the projects, you know, they were doing good ROI, but we didn't really believe in them. So we had the idea, if we could bring big companies to do blockchain projects, we can invest in them, but we can also do successful projects. So we were the first in the world in 2017 to do reverse ICOs. And the first one we did was Kin, the Kik ICO that raised $100 million. So we did some reverse ICOs, but at one point, these companies, these mainstream companies came to us and asked, so we understand what we want to do, but what technology should be used? Mm -hmm. So we researched the entire kind of technologies in the market, and our conclusion was there was no mainnet that is good enough for mainstream consumer adoption. Mm -hmm. So this is when we decided to do it ourselves, to do orbs. We launched orbs together with a third co-founder, Tal, mm -hmm. uh, and this is like uh, the beginning of orbs. So orbs blockchain is defined as the most practical enterprise blockchain solution. Mm -hmm. Now then, what makes Orb the most ideal enterprise blockchain then? Yes, so we think that there is a huge problem in the market. The market is separated into extremes. Uh, there's like a dichotomy. On one hand, you have uh, public blockchains. You know, very famous public blockchains, but if you look at the adoption, it's really, 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 really small. Mm -hmm. And more so, enterprises are not that interested in public blockchains and in tokens. They don't understand the value for them. Um, and on the other hand, you have like private blockchains, right? Like hyperledgers, like other enterprise blockchains that people are building. But these blockchains, in our opinion, they do not really use the true innovation of blockchain technology. They are private. You can probably do it with any other technology other than blockchain. They are missing the point. I mean, the beauty of blockchain is open source and decentralization, right? Exactly. So right. what we want to do is to solve this problem of the extreme ideology. Mm -hmm. Orbs is creating a platform which is a public blockchain, mm -hmm. but it is directed for enterprises. Mm -hmm. So we are not as public as Ethereum, and we want every user to be able to look at the data, because mm -hmm. enterprises don't allow it. We are not private like Hyperledger, where we don't even use the innovation in blockchain. We want to be the solution that solves these extreme problems. We want mm -hmm. to bring a pragmatic, but public blockchain mm -hmm. for enterprise. So the core innovation that we are doing enterprise, but we are also doing public. We're not missing on the main concept. Now, when a company decides to adopt or embrace blockchain, it could be a hassle because they would have to change their whole business infrastructure, right? So from your end, when a company decides to implement blockchain, what services do you provide? Right. Um, so first of all, I think the interesting question is why should a company right, adopt right. blockchain, right? And I think the, the answer is we think blockchain is the next generation of open source. Mm -hmm. And we think companies should use blockchain because it will make them more competitive and more successful, and also more open and f more fair for the users, like open source uh, code. Mm -hmm. So usually when we meet a company, the first thing and the most important thing is to sit together and understand how blockchain technology can make the company more competitive and more successful. So the business is, is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. After we solve this, then we we go into the technical, technical side and we explain to them how using OBS as a public blockchain for enterprise, they can implement their uh, solution. But the, uh, the answer to the question why blockchain is so important and it's really, really hard to, to, to answer. And this is the first step. Then what, is, what could be the most uh, wait, noteworthy point that a company seeks sense when they decide to implement blockchain then? Is it the, uh, the reward system? Is it the transparency? What is it? So um, I tell you what it is not. It is not necessarily decentralization. Mm -hmm. 
because enterprises, they do not understand the value in a completely decentralized you know, system, 15,000 right. nodes. They, they want a blockchain for them and their partners. I mean, to go centralization would be a bit more efficient solution for them. It's, it, at the current stage, it's too extreme for them. Mm -hmm. So the key point in blockchain, in our opinion, is openness. Mm -hmm. We call it open blockchain. Mm -hmm. We want to do open apps. And we see blockchain as the next generation of open source. Mm -hmm. And open source was very successful because of two reasons. Mm -hmm. First, it enabled comp companies to become more competitive, to mm -hmm. improve their business, but it also created ecosystems that are bigger and more fair for their users. Mm -hmm. So if you take Google Android, for example, they lost the battle for Apple, so they did Android as an open source. In five years, they became 75% of all mobile right. phones in the world. So they gave up the code, but they built a strong ecosystem of developers and customers, and, mm -hmm. and they gained a huge distribution. We think companies should do the same thing with blockchain. They should adapt blockchain, because it will enable them to create applications that are more open, and more collaborative, but also more uh, competitive. So the promise of blockchain, in our opinion, is openness, mm -hmm. much more than decentralization. So then what would the keyword of openness, what, cert what benefit would it bring to the customers then? Right. So it brings, in our opinion, a three main uh, values. Mm -hmm. The first value is transparency. Right. So you as a customer, uh, not necessarily an end user, you also can be like a partner in a bank, mm -hmm. like a banking partner transparency. Each one can look and see that the protocol is behaves according to the rules. Mm -hmm. uh, a good example is maybe an exchange, right? Mm -hmm. If you have an exchange, we don't know what's going on. Maybe right. there's front running, maybe there's not. Mm -hmm. So the first guarantee is transparency. I can look at the book and I can see that there's no, no front running, no one is cheating me. Mm -hmm. The second value is forkability. Mm -hmm. Forkability basically means I as a customer or, or, or as a business partner, have the ability to fork the application mm -hmm. and do my own. Fork meaning branch out, right? Branch out. Right. If I'm not happy with what's going on, I can just fork it and do my own. Mm -hmm. So this gives me a lot of trust that the protocol will have a balance of power. Mm -hmm. Take, for example, Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin you can fork every day. Right. So if Bitcoin will just do, the developers of Bitcoins, the core developers, will, they will just do whatever they want. They change, right. completely change the rules we can just fork it and do our own. Mm -hmm. So there is a strong balance of power because of the forkability guarantee. Mm -hmm. And the first uh, value is governance. Governance basically means you understand what are the rules of the system and how they change. This means, for example, App Store. What is the biggest problem with App Stores? Developers, they don't know exactly how, who accepts them to the App Stores. Right. They don't know what happens if someone throws them away. Mm -hmm. So governance is all about the rules of the system. Imagine in the App Store that you as a developer uh, see in a transparent way the process of accepting and rejecting applications. This would be a much more interesting uh, use case for you than you know, App Store, the, the current Apple App Store. Now, the blockchain or cryptocurrency industry has been experiencing a, a kind of a bumpy trip over the past few years. Now, compared to a few years back, uh, are firms more open to adopting blockchain? Or, I mean, if so, what is the biggest thing, the biggest change that happened to them? Right. So I think we, we really see kind of a gradual uh, adoption of, right. of blockchain technology, uh, mainly in the enterprise sector. Mm -hmm. So the DApp sector didn't really have a lot of success. Mm -hmm. So we have like 5,000 no, no DApps. No killer DApps, right? <laughs> nothing. But on the enterprise side of things, we really see gradual adoption. So in the beginning, they were interested in the technology. Right. Now they are in the phase that they are doing proof of concept of the technology. But they also have a challenge. Most of the proof of concept that enterprises do fail. Why? Because they focus on the technology. They want blockchain technology, but they do not yet uh, understand the full value of blockchain for their business. So now we are exactly at this stage. Now it is the stage where we need to explain existing companies that with blockchain technology, they can become more open and more collaborative and more competitive on the business side. Mm -hmm. So then we will move from the step of doing a proof of stake, proof of concept, to do a successful, uh, you know, full uh, product. And this is now the stage enterprises are at. Then turning the, turning the table around, there's, there are still some skeptics in the current industry. Like, so people and like companies are still hesitant to implement blockchain. But then what is the factor that is keeping companies away from looking into blockchain then? So in my opinion, um, understanding. Understanding. Education. Why? Because I think 
the market is divided into extremes. On one hand, the public blockchains that they push decentralizations, mm -hmm. and companies don't understand decentralization. Why do I, you know, decentralization basically says there are no companies, right. so they don't understand it. On the other hand, you have private blockchains that talk about the technology of blockchain, but in my, in our opinion, misses the actual innovation of public blockchain, the openness, which is openness. Right. Right. So we think at this current stage, we understand the technology, mm -hmm. we understand decentralization mm -hmm. is ideology, but not necessarily the main goal. Now we need to gap between the extreme and create open but practical public blockchains for enterprise. Now, but then from the perspective of government, now they are looking into blockchain then. So what would you say that they're in the stage of? What stage are they in when it comes to applying blockchain? Right. So I think government uh, use cases are very similar to enterprise uh, uh, use cases. Mm -hmm. They see the promise of blockchain in creating uh, services for the you know for the population that are more fair, mm -hmm. more transparent. This can be for managing you know real estate uh, ledger, right. how to buy houses, uh, and many other like government-owned properties. If you manage them in a more transparent way, mm -hmm. if you manage them in a more open way, they can be more fair and provide right. a better service for the users. So governments are in a similar stage to enterprise. They uh, they try the technology, but now they are really starting to understand how becoming more open will also make them a better government, and this is what they're doing now. Now, I'd say that Orbs is one of the frontiers in leading the government adoption of blockchain, and Orbs is collaborating with the South Korean government in adopting blockchain technology. So would you care to tell us the story behind that? Right. Um, so there are different um, centers in, in Korea that is really uh, pushing uh, blockchain technology. The Seoul City mm -hmm. is completely for blockchain. You know, they are creating a blockchain fund, many projects in Seoul. Jeju Island, you know, the governor there right. wants, wants to create uh, the, a blockchain island. Mm -hmm. And then there's other provinces uh, in Korea that are very focused on the innovation of uh, blockchain. By the way, not only blockchain, blockchain, AI, and other key. The, the fourth uh, industrial revolution, exactly, right? Exactly right, right. that. So there's, you know, uh, even the government sector that is working on the fourth industrial revolution, and blockchain is one of these. So I think one of the special things about Korea is that the government and the local governments are really, really positive and forward thinking about blockchain as part of the fourth generation of uh, industrial revolution. Right. And this, this is why I think Korea is really booming mm -hmm. in terms of blockchain, lots of startups, it's really a blockchain nation. Now Orbs just formed a partnership with Kakao or Ground X. Now, how did the partnership came to be, and uh, what are you trying? What are you looking for from this partnership? So, uh, when we came to Korea, it was very important to us to have strategic partners because right. you know we are Israeli. We are in Tel Aviv. Our key uh, advantage is research and technology. We are not necessarily the number one player that can implement technology for the mass market in uh, Korea. So, we wanted strategic partners, and obviously, you know, Kakao or Naver or one of the conglomerates are could be one of the most strategic partners. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, we had very good synergy with Kakao, mm -hmm. and then they wanted to invest in Orbs, so we were very lucky to, to uh, be part of the uh, Kakao family. And, and one of Kakao's you know, blockchain ventures is obviously GroundX, right. uh, which are doing an amazing job you know, in building a mainnet mm -hmm. uh, to bring blockchains to mainstream adoption, maybe for the Kakao family. Mm -hmm. And we saw a lot of synergy uh, on the research and R&D stage uh, f between Orbs and, uh, and Groundex. Blockchain technology is still uh, immature. Mm -hmm. There's so much work we still need to explore mm -hmm. uh, to solve. So by joining you know, a research team together and R&D team together, it makes a very good synergy and, uh, and we can push you know, blockchain adoption and technology uh, forward. Now, you are actively trying to expand into South Korea. Mm -hmm. So what is next for you when it comes to expanding your business to South Korea? Yeah. Uh, so we are focusing on enterprise use cases. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, almost all the big enterprises and conglomerates in Korea are doing blockchain. Mm -hmm. So our mission is to form partnerships with them, to be research partners, R&D partners, and also business partners that can actually supply the, the actual <laughs> products. And so this, this is what we're doing now. We're focusing on, the, on the acquiring uh, strategic partners, mm -hmm. and mainly the biggest enterprises. Mm -hmm. so, Orbs hasn't put out that much of a real-life product yet because it is relatively new and it is a mainnet project. So what could the um, investors or just blockchain enthusiasts expect? What use cases can they expect when time passes you know, in the past like year or two? So, uh, so we just launched our mainnet uh, last week. Mm -hmm. 
uh, which was great. Uh, we also had a big event in Korea. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now Orbs is ready for production. And, and indeed, the next step mm -hmm. is to start building solutions on top of Orbs. And we see several verticals that are very, very bullish on, on, on blockchain. Mm -hmm. The first one is uh, telco. Telecommunications such as uh, SK, you know, KT, uh, LGU Plus. Mm -hmm. So all this industry is very, very ent enthusiastic about uh, blockchain. They have a lot of use cases, identity mm -hmm. and reconciliation. So this is one sector we are heavily focusing on. Mm -hmm. The second one, obviously, is the financial industry. Right. So we are um, working or trying to work with several of the biggest uh, financial institutions here in Korea to develop uh, next generation financial services, credit card services. Mm -hmm. And the third vertical is consumer facing uh, verticals, whether it's in the ad tech or the social business companies like, uh, you know, uh, Kik mm -hmm. that are doing, uh, they are trying to disrupt the way consumer facing applications uh, mm -hmm. work, obviously also Kakao and Gramlex. So these are the three verticals that at the moment we see uh, most in, uh, enthusiasm and adoption of uh, blockchain technology. Well, that is all the questions we have today. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Uriel Pellet, the co-founder of Orbs. Thank you for watching.